Namaste dosto. So a beautiful girl approaches you in the spice aisle, the spice aisle of the supermarket while you're traveling overseas. And she says to you, do you want to come back to my house tonight? What do you do? This really happened to me. And I'm going to tell you the story and tell you why you need to be so careful of this while traveling. Now, this is a scam that I could never capture because I wouldn't put myself in this situation. So let me tell you the story. Of all the places in the world, I did not expect this story to be set in Pakistan because it's a conservative country and men and women are very segregated there. But this story takes place in their capital city, Islamabad. Islamabad is a beautiful, well-planned city set below the Magala Hills. It's the safest, most expensive, and most liberal city in the country. It's definitely a comfortable and luxurious city, which I don't think a lot of people expect to find in Pakistan. And if you're a traveler to Pakistan, I recommend you land here and spend a few days getting to know Pakistan before you go off exploring the rest of the country. So the story starts here in Islamabad. I'm walking through the very famous Jinnah supermarket and I'm talking to my wife on the phone. Now the Jinnah supermarket is not a supermarket, it is a massive bazaar, really, really long bazaar with everything you could ever want to buy. And I'm talking to Manisha on the phone and I'm like, Manu, I found this amazing Chinese restaurant the other night. I ate there last night. I'm going to go eat there tonight. It's called Jinyaki. I always tell my wife where I am and what I'm doing because when you're traveling alone like I do, you need someone who knows where you are at all times in case something goes wrong and they can't find you or something happens to you. So she's the person I tell everything to. And I also send her my GPS locations and everything as well. So I hang up on her and I arrive at this Jin Yaki restaurant and I order Mongolian beef, chili chicken and three spiced chicken. Mm. It's good. It's good. And I sit down at, at my table and I'm, I'm eating my food. And I can feel that someone is watching me. You know that feeling when you just know someone's watching me? Now, I'm a foreigner in Pakistan, so you will get stared at a lot and people will say stuff like Deko Deko Ferangi, like look, look, it's a foreigner because there's so few foreign tourists there. But I wear a salva kameez and a pakol in Pakistan so I can blend in and so I can avoid attention basically. So there were very few times where people were actually staring at me in Pakistan. This was the first time I actually noticed it. And so I look up from the table and I see this lady sitting on the tables outside and she is just staring me back in the eyes like we're locked in eye contact. Now that in itself is a very strange thing. Women do not lock eyes with men in Pakistan. It just doesn't happen. If you catch the eye of a woman in Pakistan, she'll quickly look away, you know? And so it's very strange for a woman to be staring at a man in Pakistan, staring at me like that. And so I just like, it, it was awkward. So I just looked back down and just kept eating, right? And a couple of minutes later, I could feel that someone was still watching me. So I, I look up again and this lady is still staring at me, like totally fixated like that. And it, it, it's creepy, it's really weird. Anyway, I notice she's this pretty Punjabi lady and I just look back down and keep eating and I just want to get out of there because, you know, it's a bit weird when someone keeps staring at you like that. And so I get up and I leave and after dinner, I need to go and buy some stuff because I'm going back to New Zealand. I need to go and buy some, what was it, tapal dane dar chai and some cardamom, some elaichi to mix into my tea because I really like that tea. So I walk about 100 meters in the dark at night across to this supermarket called Hatim Supermarket. And I'm like rustling around in the spice aisle looking for like some fresh elaichi. You got to make sure it's fresh, the stuff that you're buying. So I'm like rustling around and this lady comes up to me and I notice it's the same lady from the restaurant. And the first thing she said was, I've been following you. 
And I'm like, oh, she's a subscriber. Cool, I love reading subscribers. <laughs> but no, no, no. She had no idea who I was. She didn't know my name. And she meant that she had literally been following me. Following me from the Jinyaki restaurant to the supermarket. I don't know if she was at Jinyaki when I arrived or not. I can't remember. But anyway, she followed me to the supermarket and now we're in the spice aisle of the supermarket, which was the very, the very back aisle of the supermarket. And there was no one else around because it was the evening time and I'm rustling through the spices and I'm like, oh, okay, uh, what's up? How are you? And we just chatted for a minute. And the first thing I noticed about her was that she didn't have an accent. So I asked her, uh, are you from here? You don't have an accent. And she's like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm from here. And then she goes to me, do you want to come back to my house tonight? And I'm like, oh, acha, this is what this is about. This is why this lady is approaching me alone in, in the back of the supermarket. And I'm going to say, yeah, nah, sorry, I can't because I'd never do that to my wife and my family because I value them above all in life. And I value companionship and I value trust, all these things. So I'd never ever do that, right? And after that, she pretty kind of quickly turned around and, and left. And so straight after that, I just went and had an ice cream. There's this great place called Marble Stone Ice Cream in F7. I love it there. And then I just walked home and on the way home, I called back Manisha. I'm like, you'll never guess what happened told her she starts cracking up and then, she's like, then I can hear my mother-in-law laughing in the background as well she's telling everyone the story so yeah and I tell you this story because you got to be careful of this while you're traveling overseas there are three things this could be and so let's go through them so you know what to do if someone approaches you like this while you're overseas now firstly she could just be lonely, right? Like it's nothing. She's just lonely and she wants some company and someone to watch Netflix with. Cool, that's fine, no problems, you know? But there are two other sinister scams that can happen if you're going back to a stranger's house while you're traveling overseas. Because these scammers, they target tourists in their city and they know what a tourist looks like. She, for example, could tell that I was a foreigner. That's why she came up to me and started speaking in English, for example. She knew I was a foreigner, even though I was wearing salva kameez and a pakot. So, yeah, there's two things. There's something called the Black Widow Scam, and then something similar, but slightly different, called a Honey Trap. This is how the Black Widow Scam works. You get to their house and surprise, surprise, she's not alone and you get robbed, then kicked out. For these scams, the bad guys just rent Airbnbs for the night and rob a bunch of people. Or she spikes your drink in your hotel room and you wake up later with your wallet gone. You've been seduced and robbed. This scam is quite common in Dubai and not many people report it to the police just out of embarrassment and the hassle of dealing with police in a foreign country who are speaking a foreign language. The other scam is called a honey trap and it's a very targeted attack. Rather than the Black Widow scam which targets any male tourist, this one works exactly the same, except in this case she'll record evidence of your encounter and use it to blackmail you. Businessmen, for example, a honey trap to extort money from. And then intelligence agencies use this to blackmail government employees to leak confidential information. And so my advice, before you go back to anyone's house or hotel, you need to know them a little bit. You need to know who they are. You need to spend some time with them. You need to work out who they are, why they want you to come back to their house at nighttime like that. So say to them, let's go and have a tea, let's go have a burger, whatever, just go and spend some time, hang out with them and work out who they are before you blindly go to someone's house. And there's one trick you can do. Try and take a selfie with them. People who are gonna scam you are not gonna let you take that selfie with them. They're not gonna want that picture taken for evidence purposes, right? So yeah, 
after a few hours, just try and take a selfie with them and just see how they react to that. So take your time, find out who the person is, and always be sending your GPS location to someone overseas so they know where you are while you're traveling. 